Today I'm going to read the book called Mega Man 2 from the Nintendo Worlds of Power series. Should take about an hour. A novel based on the best-selling game by Capcom, Mega Man 2. Okay. Chapter 1 Welcome, welcome, said Dr. Light, smiling as he opened the door for Mega Man. The lab looked pretty much the same as it always had. Beakers bubbled over as they boiled away on flaming burners. Bubbles rose through clear pipes, pushing red, yellow, and green liquids through a network of crazy plumbing. Huge machines covered with lights pulsed and beeped as information sped through the circuits. Reams of paper were being spewed out, each page covered with numbers, letters, graphs, and formulas. Dr. Light was always working on a hundred things different at once. Mega Man, said Dr. Light. I hate to have to tell you this news, but... I know, I know, said Mega Man. I saw it on the news beam. Dr. Wily is back. I thought we had destroyed him, but I guess he's even stronger now than we had imagined. Dr. Light nodded. And this time, he's created eight of the most terrible robots ever built. Anyone who wants to capture Dr. Wily has to get past each of those robots first. He looked at Mega Man. You have fought many battles, Mega Man, and... And you have won them all. You may be invincible. You are the finest super robot I have ever built. Mega Man would have blushed if his circuits had been programmed for that activity. But I don't know if you would be able to fight your way to Dr. Wily alone, continued the doctor. From what I understand, these robots are capable of the highest level of fighting ever imagined. And even if you do make it past them, you still have to fight your way into Dr. Wily's castle. And who knows what creatures he's created to protect him there. Mega Man nodded. He didn't look afraid as he waited to hear what Dr. Light would say next. He thought about the past. A few hours earlier, he had been back in his comfortable little sweet home in the tiny village nestled high in a mountain valley. He had been watching the news beam when his permanently attached proton beeper had gone off. Its red light flashed as it beeped. That meant that Dr. Light was trying to reach him. Mega Man had turned in the doctor on the video screen. Mega Man, please report at once to my laboratory, Dr. Light had said urgently. Mega Man had looked around at his comfortable home and paused for a moment. There was no choice. He was a robot. He had to obey his creator. Dr. Light was just as smart as Dr. Wily, but he used his genius for good, not for evil. He had vowed long ago to do everything in his power to protect the universe from destruction. Dr. Wily had become his main enemy. When Dr. Light first created Mega Man, he hadn't intended to make a superhero. Mega Man was originally created as a tool-using robot. He was small, but he was the best tool-using robot ever made. He would be able to fix anything using any kind of tool ever invented. He was programmed so that any tool put into his hand would automatically be used in the most effective and efficient way possible. But soon after Mega Man was built, Dr. Light began to fear for the universe. Much evil was at work, all stemming from the mind of the fiendish Dr. Wily. Quickly, Dr. Light made some changes in his robot. First, he programmed him to think of nothing but pure good, to seek out evildoers and to always fight on the side of truth and justice. Next, he upgraded Mega Man's tool-using capabilities to include all existing and all imaginable weapons. Mega Man, the super robot, had been created. And what a robot he was. He'd fought every villain he'd come up against, fought them all to the finish, or so he'd thought. Now, it looked like Dr. Wily had come back to... Life, and this time he was more evil than ever. 
Mega Man turned his attention back to Dr. Light. And so, Mega Man, said the doctor, I have decided to clone you, to copy your circuits, and to create another Mega Man, two of you together, or to be able to get the job done. Mega Man nodded. He wasn't sure if this idea would work. But he was a robot. He had to obey his creator. Okay, Dr. Light, he said. How do we do it? Dr. Light gestured towards the back of the laboratory. Mega Man saw a huge, freestanding box with open doors. A control panel on its side was blinking madly, flashing red and yellow lights. My latest invention, he said proudly, the Robotransometer XZ4000 with cloning capability. He led Mega Man to the door. Please step inside, he said. This won't hurt a bit, and when I open the door, there'll be two of you. Mega Man walked into the box, and Dr. Light shut the door behind him. It was dark in there, and then the box began to shake. Mega Man reached out and tried to hold onto the walls as the quaking increased. Then there was a series of loud, booming sounds, followed by a crash of metal on metal. Something screeched, and a bell rang. Sirens sounded, whooping wildly in the total darkness. Mega Man fell to the shrieking floor and was still. Chapter 2 The door of the Romo transometer swung open, letting in a stream of light. Mega Man stirred. His head hurt. My head hurts, he said. What? shouted Dr. Light. You're a robot. You're impervious to pain. Dr. Light charged past Mega Man and searched the interior of the box. And why is there still only one of you? I don't know, answered Mega Man, but my head really does hurt. Dr. Light approached Mega Man and examined his forehead. No wonder it hurts, he said. You've got a nasty bruise. <laughs> then his mouth fell open. A bruise? Dr. Light looked puzzled. Robots don't bruise. What have I done? He thought for a moment and then pinched Mega Man on the arm hard. Ouch, yelled Mega Man. Why did you do that? I was checking something, and I think I've found the answer, said Dr. Light. Come with me. He led Mega Man to another machine and hooked him up to it by attaching electrodes to Mega Man's neck. He watched the monitor closely as it blinked. And flashed, showing formula upon formula on the screen. Then the monitor went blank for a moment. When it came back on, spelled out across the face of the screen were the words, Positive identification confirmed. Subject is human. Mega Man blinked and looked again. He couldn't believe it. He wasn't a robot anymore. He was alive. Dr. Light turned to him and smiled. How does it feel, Mega Man? he asked. Mega Man couldn't answer. He was still in shock. It was a mistake. I admit it. I must have just pushed the wrong sequence of buttons. But I think it will work out anyway, said Dr. Light. According to the printout here, you have retained your full robot memory and will be able to function just as well as you always have in battle. But, but Mega Man stumbled over the words, am I still invincible? Dr. Light paused. His smile faded. I don't know. I certainly hope so. But there is no way to be sure. He put his hand on Mega Man's shoulder. You'll just have to be extra careful. Mega Man felt something he'd never felt before. It was a strange feeling, and it made him jumpy. The feeling was fear. It was a feeling he'd put up with behind him in the hope to destroy Dr. Wily. He gathered himself together and faced Dr. Light straight on. I'm ready for my mission, he said. Do you have a briefing for me on my robot enemies? Dr. Light looked down at Mega Man. He paused. I know what you're thinking, said Mega Man. You think now that I'm human, my size won't work against me. You think I'm too small to do the job? Dr. Light shook his head. I might have thought that for a moment, but I have confidence in you, he said. You may be small, but you're tough, and you're determined. Step into my office, and I'll tell you everything I know about Dr. Wily's robots. Mega Man followed Dr. Light into his office, and listened intently while the man explained how to fight each of the robots. Mega Man, in order to reach Dr. Wily, you'll have to destroy his eight robots' guardians. Metal Man, Flash Man, Bubble Man, Air Man, Crash Man, Heat Man, Wood Man, and Quick Man. Each robot lives in a different weird world, and some of the robots have henchmen to do their dirty work. You'll have to battle them as well. I'll still be in contact with you through your proton beeper, finished Dr. Light. I'll be following all your activities, and when you're ready to leave one robot's empire and enter another, I'll give you the password. Okay then, Dr. Light, said Mega Man. I'm off. It sounds as if I should start with Metal Man. He shook the doctor's hands. Wish me luck. Chapter 3 Crash Boom Bang, 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 bang 
The noise was so loud that the Mega Man could barely hear himself think. He looked around. So this was Metal Man's world. Everything he looked. Everywhere he looked, Mega Man saw machinery working, and all the machinery was loud. Pistons pumped, coils uncoiled, and springs sprung, cogs turned, and wheels revolved. And then, there were the gears, hundreds of them, no thousands as far as Mega Man could see. Giant gears with teeth the size of refrigerators. The gears gnashed their teeth together, grinding with a noise louder than the ladder's chainsaw. Mega Man winced. His ears hurt terribly which was a new feeling for him. He wanted to put his hands over them to protect them from the noise, but he knew he had to be ready to defend himself. And how could he fire his Mega Gun and his hands with his hands over his ears? Mega Man shook his head and tried to ignore the noise. He must move on. He must seek out and destroy Metal Man. That was his mission. That was why he was here. He started to walk, balancing along the top of a huge machine that pumped out steel parts. Crash! Crash! Mega Man wasn't doing very well at tuning out the noise. Then he looked up and saw something that made him forget the din completely. There was a huge iron weight dropping down onto him fast. It looked like it weighed at least three tons. And the bottom, the part that Mega Man was looking up at, was covered with giant spikes. Mega Man jumped and ran his head as fast as he could. The weight crashed down behind him. He sighed with relief. And then he heard another crash right next to him. Another weight. And then another. And another, they were coming down all around him. This must be Dr. Wily's doing, said Mega Man as he dodged the weights. Well, he won't get me so easily. He ran even faster, turning almost invisible as he zipped between the weights. Then he spied a conveyor belt, rolling along between the clamorous machines. He jumped onto it. He needed a rest. The belt carried him along, past huge machines that set off sparks as they pounded metal into new shapes. The noise was overwhelming. As soon as he felt refreshed... Mega Man jumped off the conveyor belt and started to run through the maze of machinery. The belt just wasn't fast enough. He wanted to find Metal Man. Mega Man ran fast, his head down. Suddenly, he crashed into a pile of barrels. He leaped over them and kept on running. Another pile of barrels tripped him up. Picking himself up, he realized that he had better watch where he was going. He kept moving quickly, but he kept an eye out for more barrels. He found that he could dodge most of them, and the rest he destroyed with his mega gun. The noise was getting louder. It was thunderous. It was deafening. Then, Mega Man saw a huge tower with a big W on it. Dr. Light had told him to watch for the tower. The W stood for wildly. Mega Man knew he must be getting closer to Metal Man's secret lair in the center of his empire. Sure enough, Mega Man came up against a huge iron door. He just knew that Metal Man must be behind it. He pounded on it with his fists, but it wouldn't budge. He kicked at it as hard as he could, but it just stayed shut. Finally, he pulled out his Mega Gun and took aim at the lock. He fired, and the door swung open. Mega Man entered, and the door slammed shut behind him with a huge crash. He walked a few feet only to find himself in front of another huge door. This time, he didn't even pause. He fired away at the lock, ran in, and let the door slam behind him. He looked to his right and to his left. This must be Metal Man's lair. But where was the evil robot? He heard a noise behind him and whirled around. Eat steel, mini man, sneered the crafty robot. Metal Man was about as tall as Mega Man, but he was wrapped in shiny stainless steel. Every corner of his armor gleamed. Wrapped around his head was a garland of sharp steel spikes. Mega Man ducked as Meg Metal Man fired whirling steel blades at him. The blades cut through the air with the sound of cold metal. Mega Man aimed his mega gun and fired back. The shots just grazed the awesome metal-plated body of the evil robot. Metal Man hurled more blades, but this time Mega Man jumped to avoid them and fired back while he was still hovering in the air. Pow! A hit! Metal Man staggered, then regained his balance. But before the robot could shoot more blades, Mega Man fired again, jumped over him, and fired once more. Pow blam. Metal Man exploded into a million gears, cogs, and flywheels. Mega Man just stood there and grinned. I always knew you were nothing but a heap of junk, Metal Man, he said with a smile. He grabbed the metal blade, Metal Man's weapon, from where it lay on the ground. Then he beeps Dr. Light. He was ready to move on to the next robot empire. Chapter 4 
Mega Man heard Dr. Light over the radio that was built into his helmet. Dr. Light was cheering. All right, Mega Man, good work, he said. I watched the whole thing on my monitor. And now you've got the metal blade, he went on. Terrific, that's a precious weapon. It's the only one that will have any effect on some of Dr. Wily's robots. Where to next, Dr. Light, asked Mega Man. There's no question about it, said the doctor. I'm going to keep in the password for Flashman's empire. Ready? Mega Man nodded. Good luck, then. Here you go. The doctor's voice faded out. Mega Man looked around. Flashman's empire was not a pleasant place. It was cold, a damp kind of cold, and gloomy. A dim blue light washed over his surroundings. Mega Man saw that he was in the midst of a group of old, ruined buildings. He would have to find his way through them, but the going would be treacherous. Loose bricks lay every which way, and tall towers looked like they were too, about to topple. Mega Man checked his energy level. Dr. Light had supplied him with energy pellets, the same kind he'd taken when he was a robot. Dr. Light had told him to be sure he kept his energy high. He took two pellets, since his reading was a little low. Then he checked his weapons and started out. It was a relief to be out of the banging, clashing world of Metal Man, but Flashman's world was just a little too quiet. Mega Man listened hard. He couldn't hear a thing. There was total silence. Suddenly, a loud stopping noise shattered over the quiet. Mega Man looked around wildly. Where was the noise coming from? He couldn't see a thing. Then he looked up, just in time to see a giant foot about to smash down on top of him. Mega Man put on a burst of speed and ran out from under the robot's foot. When he'd gone a safe distance, he turned to look back. This was the most gigantic robot Mega Man had ever seen. It was ten times his size, towering high above him on massive legs. Its feet were the size of a small car, and its legs were like silos. That must be Mr. Big, said Mega Man. Dr. Light warned me about him. He's one of Flashman's helpers. Stop, stop. Mr. Big kept on coming straight at Mega Man. Prepare to be flattened, he roared. Mega Man looked around desperately. The robot was coming towards him so fast he didn't even have a chance to fire. Then he spotted a tiny crack in the broken down brick wall behind him. Aha, he said. This is one time I'm happy to be as little as I am. The huge robot reached out to grab him, but Mega Man jumped into the crack just in time. Mr. Big stopped and looked around. The giant robot was confused. Mega Man figured he must have looked as tiny as a mouse to the robot, and now he was just like a little mouse who had disappeared into his hole. Mr. Big shrugged and stomped off in the other direction. Mega Man took a moment to check his weapon's energy levels and gear them up. Then he took off after the robot, leaping from brick to brick between the big buildings. Mega Man moved quickly, sneaking up on the stomping robot from behind. When he had a clear shot, he fired the metal blade. It hit. Mr. Big roared. Mega Man fired again. The robot tried to turn and come after Mega Man, but his main circuit had been damaged. Mega Man fired one more time, and this time Mr. Big fell down and didn't move again. The blades fired from the metal blade had cut through the robot's giant legs, as if they were butter. Mega Man looked at the fallen robot. You might be big, he said, but you know what they say. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. End part one.